I don't think that that song fails to make someone smile. You have to smile when you hear that song. And by the sound of it and the look of it, this is going to be my Beach Boys video. I'd like to give a quick shout out to John B. Good, who has been talking to me about this video of me making the Beach Boys. Um, and also to, I think, Dark Light, who has also in the past discussed the Beach Boys with me. And, sorry, had to pause it. Um, and also I wanted to thank the KISS community for being so open that I'm a really big Beach Boys fan because some people, um, you know, they're all classic rock, classic rock, and I love classic rock, like ACDC and um, Aerosmith. Uh, and then, like, I like bands like 38 Special and Survivor and, um, Ario Speedwagon. Well, Ario, Ario and Survivor, they're two of my dad's favorite. But, um, like, the Beach Boys, they are so kind of removed from classic rock, even though they are considered, like, pop rock. But anyway, this is going to be, um, just a video of, of, basically how I got started with the Beach Boys. Maybe I'll mention a couple of my favorite songs or albums. But um, the story of how I got started with the Beach Boys kind of is related to my age. I first saw the Beach Boys on a rerun of Full House. The episode Beach Boys Bingo in season two where, you know, DJ wins the Beach Boys radio contest by well, technically she didn't win, but, um, she got, she t told the radio DJ that she knew the tune Help Me Rhonda when really, you know, Danny, Jesse, and Joey, they come in the room and they say, Rhonda! And then she says, Rhonda, and then she wins. But anyway, that's how I first saw the Beach Boys. But full house aside, the minute I saw the Beach Boys on TV and I heard their music and everything, something within me, I, I just kind of told myself, I'm gonna like that band. I don't really know much about them, and I've only heard like two of their songs, two or three of their songs in this program of Full House, in the episode, but I'm gonna somehow like them. And uh, for a while I only knew the songs um, like that were featured on the Full House episode, and because my parents did not own any cassette tape or CD or compilation album or record or any form of the Beach Boys music. It's not that they are not fans, it's just they didn't own any. And um, I discovered the Beach Boys by myself without my parents' help or any other adults' help. I kind of discovered them all on my own, which in the days of like when Google was not a part of my life and I wasn't using the internet or anything. It, it was 2003, by the way. I was like seven. Um, yeah, I think I was seven. Yeah. 96 to 2003. Yeah, seven. <laughs> um, it was a lot harder to discover things on your own. So I'm pretty... I, I think it's pretty cool that I discovered them all on my own looking back at it. Um, and so after I discovered the Beach Boys and, you know, just kind of knew about them, um, it really didn't start to take off until maybe fifth grade where, um, my friend and I in fifth grade, we did the talent show. This is 2007. We did, we decided to do the talent show and we wanted to do something different. High School Musical and Hannah Montana were very big around this time. And let me tell you, a lot of people did those songs and dances and the talent show that year. I am very glad to say 
we didn't. Um, we were looking for something different to do, and um, because she had a bigger CD collection than I did at that point, uh, we went over to her house and we started looking through CDs and we were like, okay, we need to do something that people are going to like, but isn't like a Hannah Montana thing. And um, we started going through her CDs and she, we came across a mix CD that she had gotten at a friend's birthday party and that mix CD turned out to be the party favorite. Um, her, the friend's, my friend's friend's mom made that for all the girls at the birthday party and I still remember the CD. It, it was custom made and everything. It was very fancy. It had a picture of the girl on there and it said like, so-and-so's sixth birthday party mix and there were like all these random songs on there like um if you have if you're happy and you know it like all these sing-along songs but also some of these like um older 60s tunes and the beach boys happened to be on there and i saw the beach boys on there i'm like oh, the beach boys i'm like maybe we should do the beach boys and she's like oh you know the beach boys my friend said and i'm like yeah i do well i did not I didn't really know a lot about them. The only thing I knew was that they were on Full House and I decided I was gonna like them. So I just said, yeah, I absolutely know them. And so I'm like, maybe we should play this song to see if it's gonna be good to dance to. And that song turned out to be Surfing USA. So um, when we played it, it turned out we both liked it and we knew that we could dance to it. So I remember when we had to audition for the talent show, well, not really audition, basically just um, be approved, I guess, because nobody would be rejected. Come on, it's like a fifth grade talent show. Unless you were doing something really, really inappropriate or something, you weren't going to be rejected. But when we went to audition, we had to tell the teacher who was running it, like, what kind of actor doing? Are you singing? Are you dancing? Are you performing magic tricks? Are you doing a... I don't, I don't even know what else you could do at that point. I, but, um, and we told her, okay, we're going to do a dance to the song Surfing USA by the Beach Boys. And I remember the teacher saying, the Beach Boys? You girls know the Beach Boys? And I'm like, yes, we do. <laughs> I didn't really know the Beach Boys that well at that point. But I remember we danced and we, um, we auditioned in front of the other um, talent show participants. And this was not like a winning talent show. It was just a it was just, you know, like, um, an, an ongoing act. Like, everyone would get up, do their thing, and at the end we'd say, let's have a round of applause for everyone. And then, you know, it wasn't like a first place, second place thing. And um, the teachers was very impressed that we were doing something that wasn't, like, Disney Channel or something. She was very impressed, and she said, oh, you girls were so cute. I give you a thumbs up. You're allowed to do that, because, um... Like, basically, during the audition, you would be rejected if you, like, had a bad song or inappropriate dance moves or costumes or anything like that. And then, um, I remember at the dress rehearsal for the talent show, um, the parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and, like, adults were allowed to come to watch because they weren't allowed to come to the actual talent show because there wasn't room. So they were allowed to come to the dress rehearsal. And I remember at the dress rehearsal, um, my friend's dad was videotaping us. And I am not saying this because I don't want to show it, but I do not have any footage of the talent show. My friend's dad was taping us. Um, my parents were not. They just didn't think so too. They were like, oh, he's taping. It'll be fine. Um, because my friend and I are no longer friends just due to the natural order of things, you know, we just grew apart. It's totally natural. Um, I don't have any footage of it, but and I really wish I did. I really wish I did because I would love to actually watch it. Not because I'm egotistical and want to watch myself, but just to relive that memory. Because we actually made our own surfboards for our costumes. Um, we had, we, we put together our own outfits and we had, we made our own surfboards off the back of White Castle ad boards that my dad brought home from work. He 
cut them out for us. And I remember they were very, very long. They were like the size of an actual surfboard. And um, he cut them out for us, my dad. And then we colored them because they were white on the back. So we got stencils of flowers and um, like starfish and fish. And um, like we drew waves and stuff like that. And I remember on one we wrote surfing and on the other one we wrote USA. So we would hold them up at the end of the show um, for surfing USA. And our outfits, we wore white tank tops, blaze. I wore this flower in my hair, uh, black shorts and flip flops. And oh, I wish more than anything that I had footage because I would love, I just love to watch it. Um, but anyway, that I remember very well. Um, the fun that we had with the talent show. Anyway, moving on, um, between that 5th grade, 2007, and now, I just spent, um, time just listening to their songs, which wasn't easy at first because I didn't have a tape or anything, um, no CD or anything, but, um, one of the first songs I downloaded for my iPod was Help Me Rhonda, and, um, I just learned so much about the Beach Boys um, from the first time I saw them till now. And um, in 2018, December of 2018, yeah, I wrote to Al Jardine and I wrote him a fan letter. And in that fan letter, I explained the talent show and how much I enjoyed Help Me Rhonda. And um, I complimented him on his solo album, Postcards from California. And he sent me back. He didn't write me back, but he autographed the picture I sent to him. Right here. Um, it says, thanks, Emily L. Jardine. And then he signed also the Help Me Rhonda lyrics that I printed offline. And I was totally freaking out about this, okay? I was at home alone when I got the mail and I got it, and I was freaking out. I called my mom and I'm like, Al Jardine just sent me back! And then I hung up with her and I called my dad and I'm like, Al Jardine, he just sent me! back and he signed and my dad's like whoa he's like you'll have to show me when you get home i was just totally like jumping up and down it was really cool and also with that al sent me one of his postcards from california because i had mentioned i tried to find his solo record for record store day but couldn't find it and um this was included with all of his record store day record um pacific postcard from california records and he autographed it on the back. Mine is not autographed, but I mean, I don't care. It's a collector. I know I think it's really cool that he included this and he, he didn't have to. It was just the most awesome thing. Al Jardine truly is the me the gentleman from Monterey, what they refer to him in a 1970s press book thing. But I, I saw a scan of it online and said, oh, the gentleman from Monterey. And I'm like, yeah, that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Um, as far as the records go, I have a hard time finding them at record stores, but I, I, I do have a handful of them. I'm working on trying to get all of them because if my mom can have every single Kiss record, like studio record, live record, I can have all the Beach Boys studio <laughs> records. I am trying. Most of them that I've found used so far have been the less popular ones. It's very hard to find a copy of, say, Summer Day, Summer Nights. Um, and on the other hand, it's very easy to find a copy of 15 big ones. Uh, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about one of my favorite albums. And one of my favorite albums of the group is Sunflower from 1970. I just love this album so much. It has Dennis Wilson's Forever, which is just one of the most beautiful love songs ever written. And to know that it came from Dennis Wilson, you know, the handsome, bad boy, ladies man, fast cars, um, only true surfer of the group. To know that he was just a true romantic at heart. It was really, really cool. Dennis had a beautiful voice. And then um, this record also has Slip On Through, another Dennis song. It has um, This Whole World, which even though that might be TM influenced, 
it's not preachy, unlike some of Mike Love's TM songs. Um, the only blunder maybe on Sunflower, perhaps, is at my window, because it's like, the bird, he came to my window, and I, I, I just don't go for it. I, I don't know, I don't really, it's kind of slow when it drags, and maybe I could like it more in the future, but. I don't really like it, um, but it does also have a song called All I Want to Do, and that has been, like, one of the most underrated songs in the whole catalog of the Beach Boys. I think it's wonderful, and Mike, he, his voice is just so different than on any other song. It's really, really cool. Sorry, just had to pause and sorry, um, but, yeah. All, all I want to do is just, Mike, according to Mike Love, and he um, has said this in an interview clip or, or whatever, but according to Mike Love, um, All I Want to Do has been one of the most requested Beach Boy songs to be played at concerts nowadays, and I don't know if he has sang that live in concert, but I would really love to hear it if he did. Maybe I'll, if anyone knows a clip of it, send it to me, <laughs> link it. Um, but I, I have gone to see both sides. Pause again, sorry. I had, I have gone to see both sides of the Beach Boys. I've gone to see the legal touring group consisting of Mike Love and Bruce Johnston. And then I have gone to see Brian Wilson and Al Jardine was playing with him. So, um, seeing four of the Beach Boys. Um, and, but I have not seen David Marks. The Lost Beach Boy, but um, maybe one day. I'm really hoping they will reunite for their 60th anniversary. That would be amazing. Will it happen? I don't know, but my mom has promised me that we, my dad and her and I would go together and that her and I can do the VIP because she said if they do, I promise that we'll do the VIP together. So if that happens, she said she would promise the VIP. But anyway, I got, my parents bought me, um, when we went to go see Brian Wilson, we saw him in 2018, in December, and, um, he was doing his Christmas shows. He played the 1964 Christmas album, uh, front to back, and that was a really cool experience, because those, some of those songs he's never played live, like, in a, that type of a setting, and that was really awesome. It was such a treat, and he, they did other songs besides, um, the Christmas album they did um of course they did wouldn't it be nice they did help me Rhonda they did um oh shoot what else did they do um I think they did Sloop John B they did Sloop John B as well um wait wait I have to I printed out the set list I'm guessing when I have it right here okay so they did Oh, Good Vibrations, and Barbara Ann, Surfing USA, Fun, Fun, Fun. Um, they included some other Christmas standards, like Oh Holy Night. It was just amazing and such a treat. And we were actually in my mom's hometown of Hammond, Indiana, which was cool. My mom was back in her hometown where she grew up. And it was just so wonderful. And then I saw Mike Love's touring group earlier that year in August of 2018. John Stamos was with them, which was really cool because I am a fan of Full House. Um, and he was playing with them and they referenced Full House and it was pretty funny. But I, I feel it, that the John Stamos Beach Boys Full House thing is like a double-edged sword because on one hand, it, it enabled my generation, people like me around my age, to discover the Beach Boys if they didn't have access to them as a child, like with a CD or whatever. But at the same time, it's like, well, that's now, does that tarnish their legacy? And is it embarrassing? Well, no, not the fact that they sang and everything like on the show, because the concert was a pretty cool concert. I mean, you had Brian Wilson there in the footage of the concert that they were at. And this was the late 80s, so that's pretty cool. But at the same time, it's like, you know, 
what happened to their legacy? Now they're performing on a sitcom. So it really is a double-edged sword. But for the record, um, even though John Stamos sang forever at the concert that I was at, Dennis Wilson is by far the better singer for that song. He wrote it. It's his creation. He has a beautiful voice. That's Dennis Wilson's song. So I was very excited. I was freaking out when John Stamos sang it, but I think it was more so because it was related to my childhood on a TV show rather than him singing a Dennis Wilson song. Just saying. Um, I got this book at the Mike Bruce show, and it's really cool. It's rare. You can only get it at concerts, and you can buy it on eBay for like, a price hike but I thought it was really cool it has all these vintage pictures from 1966 just utterly cool it was either that or a t-shirt and I I texted my mom because she didn't go with me to that one uh, my dad and I went it was really sweet I have a picture of us and I'm wearing the same flower it's my Beach Boys flower basically I wore it for the talent show I wore it to the concert <laughs> Um, my dad went with me and I texted her and I'm like, should I buy a t-shirt or this rare book? And she's like, the book. And I'm like, that's what I thought too, but I'm like, eh, the t-shirt or a rare book. Anyway, I thought that was really, really awesome. I'd love to go see either side again, just because I'd like to do it. Um, this is the first Beach Boys album that I got. Oh, it's not up here. Oh, it's not up here. Oh, yes it is. My sister bought me Pet Sounds for my birthday one year, and I didn't collect vinyl until then, but she saw it. Um, we were at Barnes & Noble together, and I saw it, I'm like, whoa, and she's like, you want that for your birthday? I'm like, you would get that for me? She's like, yeah, I haven't gotten you anything yet. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, you're the most awesome sister in the world. So to Eliza, I thank you. I would have treasured this forever. Um, and it's the mono version, which I prefer the mono version. That's how it was mixed in 1966. It can be um, difficult sometimes to listen to the stereo remix of that mono all the way for pet sounds. So um, this video is kind of long, but before I go, I will say, um, even though I didn't know much about the Beach Boys when I saw them on TV, I knew their names and that was it. The Wilson brothers truly are the Beach Boys. They are truly just so talented. I mean, asking to pick your favorite one is entirely impossible. I mean, Brian, despite his battle with mental illness, is just one of the most legendary singer-songwriter musicians ever. And then we have Carl Wilson, just a wonderful human being, really stepped up to the plate when Brian stopped touring and really was able to keep the band creatively going in the 70s. We have Dennis Wilson as well, who really got his chance to shine, starting in like the 2020 album, well, the Friends album, then the 2020 album, and Sunflower, and just, I've been looking for his Pacific Ocean Blue record for like two years now, and I've so far failed, but I'm not giving up. I will find it one day. And, um, of course then, um, Mike Love, I will say that he is very admirable because he didn't take drugs in an era plagued with drugs, so I will say that. That's very admirable in my book. And he co-wrote a lot of the, of the um, songs. Co-wrote. So, I mean, we wouldn't have California Girls without them because he did... Well, if Brian did the melody, but Mike did most of the lyrics, so you can't discount that. I mean... Mike Love is a whole other subject, but I will say I respect him as a beach boy, as part, as a musician, as a person, not so much, as much, I'll say, but that's a whole other subject. Then we have um, Al Jardine, who is just so cool. I am, I would love to meet him in person. I mean, he was so kind enough to send those things back to me. Not everyone would do that. Al truly is just, a, he seems like such a down-to-earth person and generous with the fans and everything like that. Then we got um, Bruce Johnston and 
I really enjoy his Disney Girls song off the Surf's Up album. I can't say one bad thing about Disney Girls. It's just the harmony and the melody and the simple times and it really does offer a lighter side to the Surf's Up album, which can be kind of dark sometimes, but it just it's just so good. And then of course David Marks, the Lost Beach Boy, who I have not seen in concert yet. Maybe I will have a chance one day. One day maybe. I'd love to do it. But David Marks, he was on, you know, the first four or five albums, so I mean, he's definitely a Beach Boy, even though he didn't stay with the group for one reason or another. It's kind of disputed, but um Maybe in the future, if this video goes well, I will do a video talking about my top Beach Boy favorite songs because, I mean, I could talk all night about the Beach Boys. I won't. I won't because that would be really rambling and boring and I'm probably rambling right now. <laughs> but I think it would be really fun um, to start a conversation about the Beach Boys because they are my second favorite band. If Kiss is my number one, it has been in my life since I've been Two, the Beach Boys is special because I discovered them on my own at the age of seven without anyone's help. And in an era where it was harder to do so, I'm kind of proud of myself for that. <laughs> um, and just before I go to connect this video totally to KISS because KISS is a part of my life every day, in the Behind the Mask book, Brian, they quoted Brian Wilson saying that he loves the energy of KISS. I think that's awesome. Totally awesome. And I don't disagree. So there you have it. I've connected the Beach Boys to KISS. I'm Emily Graziano. Stay safe. And hopefully I can do another Beach Boys video in the future. Bye!